You might have missed this one, but you got to pay attention. Cyber warfare is on the rise as documents reveal the United States Federal Reserve has been attacked by hackers more than 50 times since 2011, including four attempts labeled espionage. Now, the hackers responsible for these attacks have yet to be revealed, but the Federal Reserve insists its, quote, critical operations have not been affected. Joining me now to discuss this, Peter Tran and Kathy Taylor. And Peter, I mean, you would expect the government to say, remain calm, all is well, and that's when you should probably be worried. I, I understand the Fed is under attack repeatedly. Institutions are under attack. But they got through, and the key was this phrase, our critical operations have never been affected. There was unauthorized access and information disclosure. And that's code in the cyber world, information disclosure that whoever got in got something, right? That's correct. But you have to keep in mind the system itself, the broader system on a global basis, which is called SWIFT, is over 43 years old. So we're looking at an aging infrastructure, just like the IRS, who Commissioner has stated, fields over one million attempts to access the system daily. It's an aging infrastructure, and this is no new surprise that this, the New York Federal Reserve and SWIFT itself is taking hits, and it's only going to get right. darker before it gets uh, any better. Are you better. saying that the security apparatus we have is, forgive the reference, but it, like an old Space 1999 rerun from the 1970s, the, you know, we have two tapes, you know, two-inch magnetic tape rolling, and that's what they're up against when it comes to North Korean or Chinese or Russian, you know, high-tech cyber attackers? Well, that or an eight-track eight-track tape in your car, right? So it's like if you're trying to patch a system this old. It's like trying to plug the Hoover Dam leak with your finger. <laughs> I mean, it's going to collapse. It's going to collapse big, right? So you look at the intent of of the nation state and cyber criminals looking to gain a foothold on the backbone of the global infrastructure like SWIFT and the New York Federal Reserve like this, right. they're intent on establishing long-term control. So let me bring in Kathy because you're a former National Security Council uh, Director for International Finance Policy. Yes. We've seen central uh, banks in other countries, they've actually stolen money from the banks. Yes. What would someone potentially want from our Federal Reserve? Money or is there information they're trying to get? You know, in many cases, we have seen attacks, as you said uh, earlier uh, this year, uh, the Bangladesh Central Bank money was uh, stolen and moved to the Philippines. Uh, last year, um, not a central bank, but over a billion dollars was thought to be stolen from 100 large banks or top banks. So we've seen lots of real money being moved. But terrorists um, and gangs of this type are uh, really looking for information in many cases. What kind of information? I mean, the Federal Reserve has $4 trillion. Email accounts, is it? ways to impersonate people to get more information, information from retailers that pass money through the banks. You know, he talked about SWIFT and this payment system, but the reality is that the new systems that are emerging and that will ultimately replace these systems are cyber-based in many, right? They're internet based system. So this problem is not going away even if we perfected or improved SWIFT. And the reality is that banks are four times more likely to be targeted uh, by cyber attacks than so any other industry. So it's a very, very real Peter, problem. Peter, is it, uh, is it a backdoor way into, say, J.P. Morgan Chase or Wells Fargo, Bank of America via the New York Fed or the Federal Reserve? Or is there something else they're after? Well, the dependencies on the networks are very interconnected. So if you look at the overall systems themselves, over one billion new forms of malicious code are in circulation in the last three years. So they're fighting a war of escalation that's going to get worse and worse. So this is akin to me of the subprime mortgage crisis of 2008 that's going to get really dark really fast unless we get to the root cause of both the SWIFT and the new system Ka that Kathy referred to. Kathy, could you bring down the Western financial system if you could gum up the works at the Federal Reserve? Well, you know, it's interesting. They got into the committee, not the 12 branches that make up the Federal Reserve banking system. There's a very important distinction there. But yes, yeah, someone theoretically could bring down the banking system, even getting into some of the banks. I mean, this is a very real possibility. But banks are the, just the top banks alone have spent $1.5 billion preventing these attacks. And so, um, you know, the banks are on it. They're very sophisticated. They're really yeah, not the money <laughs> institutions. They're data institutions right. now. Yeah, but the Federal Reserve's got an eight track to keep it. So that's secure. right. That's right. Well, there's more work to be done, for sure. Appreciate you both being here. There were some great eight tracks back in the day, right? <laughs> Coming up, Hillary Clinton isn't the only person going after Donald Trump. Entrepreneur and Dallas Mavericks owner Mark Cuban, he's on the attack. Did you hear what he said? He says the candidate, Trump, is not a billionaire like he claims to be. We're going to tell you exactly why next.